fact that we are going to make sure that we can isolate them and keep these people alive so they survive the case, this is the way we've got to be thinking. It takes a real shift in mindset. Much more to come here on NewsHour. Distribution of the BBC NewsHour in the U.S. is supported by T. Rowe Price, offering a strategic investing approach that examines investment opportunities firsthand. Institutions, advisors, employers, and individuals choose T. Rowe Price. T. Rowe Price, invest with confidence. Three days ago, we were languishing in the winter rain of the Pacific Northwest. And now we find ourselves on what looks like a frozen lake, except it's the opposite of a frozen lake. It's really actually nice and warm here. We're at the lowest point in North America. I don't know what it is, a couple hundred feet below sea level. And you know where we are. But what is of interest to me are these patterns in the salt on these flats and i'm looking at them here and all these really cool looking shapes and designs and i'm thinking foregrounds 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 so how do you make this photo into an interesting foreground is really what the question is landscape photography is like searching for buried treasure you dig and you seek and you explore and you research and you find and eventually everything is going to come together and you're going to find the buried treasure. And I love the journey. So I'm just searching around and hunting and looking for something that might become a leading line or something that provides some sense of balance and symmetry from side to side. Just something that's interesting. Because this is going to be one of those shots, and I call it the wide angle paradox. So when you throw a wide angle lens on your camera, and then you put your camera low down to the ground, the foreground actually becomes the main subject. You're like flipping a conventional photo on its head. Normally the main subject is somewhere in the background and you're zooming in to isolate the main subject. But when you go wide angle and low to the ground, the main subject is the foreground. So that's what makes this particular shot so interesting is that we're just looking for something that will become the main subject in the photo. And before we go, let's just get a picture of us jumping in the air. Should be easy. Let's put the camera on a tripod and set the timer. And ready, set, go. Oh, too early. Let's try again. Oh, this one looks utterly painful. Okay. Are you ready? Let's, let's get it right this time. Okay. Oh, too early again. And oh, there we are again. Bad timing. All right. How about this? Let's give up on this idea. How about I'll just take a picture of you jumping in the air. Oh, perfect. And now you take a picture of me jumping in the air. Oh, I look horrible. Take that one again. There we go. Airborne. So if you want to have some good fun with your photography, and if you want to know how to be in the right place at the right time to have a load of fun and get some excellent photos, then click the link in the description below and take my free web class. And I'll tell you all about my four step system. So there's this hole in the salt right here and there's water in it and the wind is making the water swirl. And uh, it looks exactly like a hole in the ice. So I'm going to try for a shot to get the sun reflecting off that water. One thing that I can't believe that I did, like one of the most stupid mistakes, is that I completely forgot to bring the short post on my tripod, which means that as I extend the tripod legs out, I have this minimum height here and I can't get the camera lower down. And it's just such a dumb mistake to make. And I can't believe that I made it, that I didn't bring my short post. If you're ever coming here, make sure you bring your short tripod post. So um, because it's so bright right now, I think I'll just try this handheld. I know I'm gonna need the camera really, really low to the ground.
and then live view. Finding a reflection is the difficult part because it's so bright that I have a really hard time seeing the uh, seeing what's on the viewfinder on the camera. It's just too bright. You have to have your head right down there and I don't want to put my knees on this salt because believe it or not it actually hurts. There we are right there. And how does that look? I absolutely love it. I'm definitely going to take some more of these if I can just get this focus point right. Okay, what I like about this setup is that I'm using this ridge here as a leading line that just points to the pattern and it just looks kind of cool. Once again, I'm so disappointed I don't have the, the short post on my tripod. So really just the big question is where do I want the horizon? I'll make horizon just above the top third. No, I'm make it top third. There we go. Set the focus point down low in the frame and bang. Check the histogram. Perfect histogram. Yeah, this is one of these times where you have to depend on the histogram because it's so bright. The environment is just so bright. Same with on a, in a snowy situation on a sunny day. You can't trust what you see on the back of the camera. You have to just rely on the histogram entirely. So this is looking good. Now, obviously, the best time to be shooting this is during the blue hour, after the sun has set, because then you'll get much more defined and distinct lines of salt and you'll get a beautiful sky. But we have a date with some sand dunes tonight at sunset during the blue hour, so we just have to make do with what we're getting right here. So we're off to the Mesquite sand dunes. Make sure you watch for that next video. See ya.